I'm back. It's opinionated infrastructure again. And not just opinionated infrastructure again, it's about Swift. Oh, uh, yeah, wow. Fine, great. Yeah, being a Swift. Why not? Swift, because Swift is really popular. It's exploding. People developing mobile apps for Apple really like Swift. So what's happened since the last time we spoke? I think it's been quite interesting because I was kind of previewing, flagging some interesting news that was gonna happen from IBM at this event they do called Interconnect. You never really know what to expect from IBM. You know you're gonna get some high level business content, but you don't know how technical they're gonna be, how deep they'll go. Anyway, day two keynote. I'm on the old Twitter and there's a tweet from Chris Latner. He's a guy that originally wrote Swift. Here it is, check this tweet out. I thought that's really interesting. Someone from Apple, someone behind the language actually cares about what IBM is doing. And then he's actually there on stage a minute later, coding, showing off Xcode, explaining to people about the profiler and the developer experience. And I think when you've got the language originator on stage, that sends out a really powerful message. So that's definitely progress. IBM's got this thing called the Sandbox. It's kind of an environment for learning Swift. It's not a deployment environment, but it's about how does the language hold together? And that's really important because Swift is changing really quickly. It's evolving quickly. Uh, the desire to deprecate and say, actually, we're moving things forward. By the time we get to Swift 3, we're going to lose some of the uh, language syntax. Something like that, you need an environment that's very fluid, that's up to date, if people are gonna learn it. And the sandbox, funnily enough, has been keeping up to date with things. So if you're interested in Swift and the progress it's making, you're not in Xcode, it's an interesting approach from IBM. Obviously, they need to integrate it with other things, they need the GitHub stuff, they need the Stack Overflow stuff, but I think that the direction of travel is interesting. And also this, it is always current. So it's not like, oh, hey, we're using the IBM sandbox, it's some old version of Swift. No, it is the latest version of Swift. And I think the fact that IBM is moving quickly because Apple is moving quickly is really significant. Both of them need to move at pace. So what's happening in this world of Swift? Well, we're definitely seeing the, the continued explosion of interest. I think it's just hit like 30,000 people following the project. We're seeing a load of new um, projects every day on GitHub. We're at Swift 2.2. We'll soon be moving to Swift 3. There's a, a desire to do that kind of, I guess to quote Mark Zuckerberg, move fast and break things. So they're not absolutely focusing on language stability at the moment. As I say, deprecating functions, moving forward, uh, trying to, to get the language as clean and elegant as they possibly can. And as I say, that's not IBM's normal modus operandi. They're all about stability. They're always about backwards compatibility. So to see them try to move at this kind of Apple pace is really interesting. But I think it's really important when we're thinking about Swift is we're gonna have to tailor it to other environments. So whether you're on the server, whether you're on the client, whether you're on even on a web browser, I think it's really interesting. What are we, when are we gonna start to see a, a, a basically kind of some sort of JavaScript Swift UI interaction? The language does need to open up. We're gonna need more investment because otherwise, how do you tailor it to what the user and the developer so want? So it's a fast exploding ecosystem and whether it's long tail or big hit, we're definitely gonna see some application developers building great apps using Swift. And that's opinionated infrastructure. <music>